official podcast. We are so happy you are here. Oh, we've had a crazy week. We know things have been absolutely insane. So now we're here to make you laugh, make you have some fun, talk, and just catch up. Hilton George, how are you doing, Hilton? How's it going? I'm doing all right. It's been a it's been a crazy week for everybody, and you know we up here trying to manage with uh, all the struggles in the news and oh, all this stuff. Man. And, you know, all this, you know, we got to keep you and us. We got to keep up with the media and all this. So we got to watch the good stuff on TV yeah. and, the bad <laughs> stuff, and we got to digest it so that we can talk about uh. it. So it's a little bit of work, but it's, you know, it, it's good that we get a chance to come here and, and you know, kind of bring bring things to light and process it. So it's, it's just a therapeutic thing for us. Yes, we hope that all of you out there are joining us to do it. Oh man, you are talking. You are just saying it like it is. It has been completely therapeutic. Chrissy, Renee, how are you, my dear? Look at her. She's got that New Hampshire glow. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't too much glowing. I mean, the I snow just... is reflecting off of you. <laughs> oh yes, it's the reflection of the snow. You're absolutely right. Yeah, we still covered down here, but up here. But you know what's crazy is so. I'm getting, I'm still connected to like my Dallas, Texas. Oh, app. it's bad there. And you... it is snowing. And of course, it's like this is this much snow. That much snow. And the whole city shut down. I, the, whole, <laughs> the whole place. The yeah. kids here are like, oh my God, is it? Did they, is it bad or is it? I was like, they shut everything down. School is out. And, you know, we, we walk in the blizzard around here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, oh, that's cute. I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, but I'm what? good. And I'm glad you're good, and I'm glad you're here. You had like several days of no heat, no light, yes. no yeah. So we're glad you're warm. You look very yes. warm. You look very good. And uh, yeah, shout out mm -hmm. to all the people who are having bad weather this week. Uh, you know, we love you. I hope you're in. You're watching the bop, and you're just cozy and comfortable in your homes. And yeah, stay safe out there wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Stay safe mm -hmm. because it seems like it's just that time of year where the winter storm is coming through. Everybody, planes, flights, if you don't have to travel, don't do it. Flights are being canceled left and right. It's just a hassle. So stay home. Yeah. It's great home. You yeah, got the stay out of cars. Southwest canceling the ticket as soon as you buy it. As soon as you get the receipt, it's like flight canceled. <laughs> You know, I think Ooh. it's just, we just got to tell people though, for real, like stay yeah. out of your car. Don't think yeah. that you can manage it because mm -hmm. you know how to drive. There's other folk around you that just have no idea. And I think that's what causes all of the chaos. Yeah. Um, and also I would encourage people start at the beginning of the year or mm -hmm. even start in the summer months, preparing for any type of winter weather. Canned goods. I Toilet yeah. paper, I, like all that. All of it. Water. Salt. I mean, it was the m bare minimum. Like I ordered this little uh, portable stove that is just a little butane thing. I'm just not even butane. It's a, what are those uh, uh, things? Electric the stove. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Barbie, butane oh, is a bastard yeah, like gas. A, 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 yeah. A sterno. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a sterno type thing. I mean, I bought sternos from the store and just made myself just so I could like boil some snow. I yeah. mean, you got to just think ahead and do these things and plan. Because again, where you did you know. get all these skills? You up here talking about She's boiling right. snow. Yeah, no, I'm the yeah. dystopian queen. I am the, on? I'm the survivalist on this Obviously. show. Like, like, this I, is who we need. In the, yeah. Well, I, listen, I told y'all when all this shit come crumbling down, <laughs> I'm going to be your girl. Y'all be like, she's so dark. She's scary. Oh, but we're going to save lives. Obviously. Yeah, Obviously. I mean, <laughs> like, man. MacGyver around this. Uh, well, we know who can. Uh, can can you skin? Can you skin the squirrel? If we gotta eat a squirrel, you know we. Uh uh, skin uh uh. We going vegetarian. Everybody gonna be oh, vegan. Man. Okay, we I'm, we canceled the trip I'm, up north. I'm done. Then. I'm done. <laughs> I'm staying in Cali. I'm cooking up all the plants. I'm cooking up all the flowers. Like yeah, yes. no, we going We ain't, I'm not skinning no animals. But yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, reporting straight from Los Angeles, where it is 62 degrees, um, you know, you guys stay warm out there. <laughs> Yo, when, hey, listen, in a couple of days, just guess what the low is going to be. Somebody try me in a couple of days. Negative 10. Negative 31. Ooh, oh, no. That's is that awesome. even, is, is that, that even possible? possible? That's, I that's, I, my, free, my freezer don't even do that. I've like, been in Boston. I mean, right? I've been in Boston when it was like negative fifteen, negative, yeah, but never like yo, negative thirty. Like that's you know what they're predicting. Like six once it degrees just gets is gonna cold, be our high. 
Yeah. Once it gets cold and it's just cold, there it's just cold. Like it felt like it just is. There's no difference between negative and yeah. So yeah. just it's crazy. Stay in, stay warm. That's the moral of the story. And like she said, yeah, you we should be like my husband has our earthquake kit. He's got yeah. stuff stocked yeah. and stockpiled. Like we had an earthquake this week, but I mean, but it wasn't bad. But still, like you just never know when something crazy is gonna hit, and you don't want to be the one who you're just stuck. You're stuck at your house. You have no water, you have no nothing. So stockpiling is good but like she said you do it all year you don't go this week yeah, and take wait. all of it so that nobody else can get some yeah like, that's what they did in north carolina the when they had that big snow a couple years yeah. ago everybody waited till the snow started falling to go to home depot try to get some salt in the snow yep. shovel oh and everybody ended up stuck on the side of the road Crazy. and all it's that terrible. craziness i was like why were you on 40 trying to go to home depot when the why? snow was coming down it's one crazy. inch an hour no. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, just to get our minds off of the crazy weather and the crazy snow, we had big news from DC this today. We had it. I mean, it was like the biggest news. Like an hour of, ago. Like an hour ago. Literally. I don't even like, know what it is. So I'm, know, this is I a figured, real reaction. I, I have I no know. idea what you're talking about. I figured you guys would not know. But as you guys know, James Gunn and Peter Saffron, they've officially started running um, the newly created DC studio. So now DC studios is kind of like, it's its own thing. It's a just it, its own place. It's all, they're making all the television shows and all the movies all under one umbrella, one umbrella. And the biggest reason is, I mean, the biggest complaint I think us as fans have always had is that nothing ever seemed to talk to each other. Like you'd right. have an animated series that did something, you had a movie that did something else and nothing ever seemed connected. Well, now DC Studios has everything under one umbrella. All the animated series, all the TV series, all the movies will all be done under this big, you know, conglomerate. And the Not cool thing yeah. is, yeah, but you know what the cool thing is, is they are, they've announced the first 10 projects. Oh. And this is basically, they basically have said they're going to do like two movies, two TV shows per year. They're not going to be stressed to meet deadlines. They want to put all their con quality. concentrated effort, yes, into having quality projects that people will love. And it sounds very exciting. Like, I honestly, I'm very excited. DC obviously has some um, some titles that are still in the, in the, you know, that have already been shot that will be released. Um, so those are still coming out, but they started naming some really, really cool stuff. And I just wanted to go over it with you. Um, we've got new movies um, coming out. It's uh, the first one is written by James Gunn. It's called Superman Legacy. And this is really going to introduce, you know, Superman, his family, and just introduce, um, it's kind of like that early, like they said, they're going to do an earlier story, not with Peter, uh, not with Henry, um, excuse me, not with Henry um, Cavell. They're going to do this newer story. And that was what sent everybody up in arms. But it sounds exciting. Um, this is going to focus on Superman balancing his Kryptonian her heritage with his human upbringings. Mm. Um, he is the embodiment of truth, justice, and American way. He is kindness in a world that thinks of kindness as old fashioned. So I'm excited. I'm excited to hear of that. What did you think, um, Hilton? I know you are. You, you and I, we live for this stuff. I knew you knew an hour ago when it hit. Like, it was like, oh! <laughs> yeah, everybody went crazy about this. And, you know, that's just reaction that, yeah. that the internet's going to do. But I think that they're on to something. And I think if, I as we get into it, people's will be people will be more at ease with these new hands on the wheel. We went through the same thing when Disney started buying up Marvel and Star mm -hmm. Wars and those franchises and like, oh, Disney's going to screw it up and da 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 and then you know, one movie come out we're like, huh? And then the second yeah. movie come out we're like, oh. And <laughs> hey, then the series right. come out we're like, oh. And now we swear by Disney Plus and, and we're there's on no it. questioning what's going on over at Disney. And I think this is right. their chance to do that. And it's going to be painful because we do have to say goodbye to Henry Cavill, who did so yes. much justice to the Superman franchise. Yes. Uh, but in order to reboot a story, you're going to have to tell different stories. Absolutely. And you're going to have to come up with certain through lines and certain plot lines that are going to tie everything together. And you see some of these possibilities, even though they didn't spell it out. This is going to be a really great way to kind of kick things off because Superman is the baseline 
of the Marvel Universe. I mean, excuse me, the DC Universe. And and to kind of kick off with him and starting with that story, I think what we're going to see is a, a certain Man of Steel type story uh, mm-hmm. that didn't go into this this dichotomy inside Clark Kent slash mm-hmm. Kal-El. But in the comics, it did. You know, yeah. this was, a uh, you know, him being raised in Kansas and all this sort of stuff. But him being genetically and, you know, physically a Kryptonian, you know, who Mm -hmm. craves solitude, hence the Fortress of Solitude, doesn't really, you know, have this reactionary tone and doesn't, you know, really have this emotional connection to people that we think that he does. And so it's going to be an interesting way to start off the storyline and maybe even set the the board for him not being just this one dimensional super good guy that just swoops around saving everybody. And it's going to be a nice reboot for a story that hasn't been told yet. I think. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. And they, the, the Superman legacy movie is going to lead us right into the authority, which is their big, like superhero. They're going to, you know, basically it's going to be, they they basically said it's an ensemble film um, uh, about superhumans who have less an idealistic approach to saving the world. So, I like that. I like that sentence because it makes me think it's going to be darker. Like if they have a, a less than idealistic, they're not going to take the superhero approach. They're going to take an approach that probably is off, you know, it, but it's very reminiscent of movies like um, that we've gotten from Marvel, you know, the the big superhero, you know, where we get everybody in one film or we get a lot of different ones. So I'm excited about that. Now, Chrissy, I know this is news to you. This is all brand new, but I thought this one was going to be something. There was a TV series that they announced today that I think you will really, really love. Um, Viola Davis also announced this that oh uh, they are focusing yeah um, they're going to focus on Waller which is one of their new television projects She's which horrible. is about which is about her <laughs> and She's instead evil. of yeah and they said instead of Peacemaker um, will appear instead of the the Peacemaker two the Peacemaker team is going to appear alongside Davis as a continuation of that show hmm. and so they're going to have it's going to be more centralized around her and I think this is kind of good because like you said she's terrible she's awful but we don't know we've never really understood how what her motivation yeah we don't understand her motivation and I think yeah. this series because it's a TV series is going to uh, give her more life. Give make her it more, make sense. <laughs> make it all make sense, right? Yeah. So, Christy, what are your thoughts? What is just your initial reaction to this potential Waller series, which I, which I personally am super excited because I know Viola Davis does not sign on to do anything. Like, right? It's got to right. be That's on a true. level. It's got to be storytelling, especially on not a now. level. Yeah, she doesn't um, have she's, to, right? She's 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 pretty well defined at this point, uh, long, well before this point, but yeah, even in this space, mm-hmm. um, I will say y'all know who I love, love, love. So I'm I'm gonna try not to knock DC as harshly <laughs> as I usually do, um, but again, it's all because of this is what they're doing and they're trying to fix it. So I do appreciate that they're trying to fix it, and we've got some. They, they got some explaining to do uh, in these shows. Because you're right. I couldn't understand when I watched Suicide Squad. I was like, what the, what's, the, what's the deal? Like, we don't even, do we even act like that? But it's got to be a really good, <laughs> and I'm sure it's going to be a really good backstory to her as to why she's so vengeful and just mean and just hateful, it seems. Um, yeah. Again, which is really shocking because we don't, you know, I don't know. Um, but I, I do feel like, it's 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 hard for me because I think of how again how established and how clear and concise Marvel has all, pretty much always been for the most part. Um, you know, since we all started paying attention, I guess you know a few decades ago in the big cinematic space, um, and it just feels like oh God, please DC get it together because I really <laughs> I really loved uh, the Batman, y'all know that. Uh, yeah. and, so, and Selena Kyle is the doll that I have back here that I was like calling something else. I don't know, but that's, I also got her for Christmas. Yes. Um, but I, I love that. And I love the Batman franchise anyway, just because I started way back when. And yeah. so I love those things. I, I, I appreciate those things and I want them to get it together and stick to you know, something. But I do love the idea of pulling in shows, smaller shows, yeah telling, you know, more enriching stories 
Um, and there is a level of intrigue when it comes to Amanda Waller. Cause again, I was really late to the whole suicide squad thing. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't get it at first. I, I talked about this before. I couldn't stand the crocodile thing. I was like, I don't... <laughs> it's not that he was a crocodile or whatever alligator. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he is. It wasn't that it was his demeanor and the character was so badly written. Um, it was yo, yo, yo. And I was like, don't uh -oh. nobody do that. If y'all right. trying to make him black, I mean, we do it <laughs> all the way. Like what white dude wrote that in? Right. Um, and so it was so obvious, but, <clears throat> but Amanda Waller always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, there, it, she just so damn mean. I just need to know why. <laughs> so I, I, that part, you got me on that. Yeah. You got me on that. I'm excited, though, because I feel like, like they said, they're putting everything under one house. So cool. everything that is animated, everything that is television, everything that is movie, they're mm -hmm. really following the, you know, the the Disney Plus, Disney there Marvel format where it <laughs> yeah. all is like every story leads to the next and everything you can grab from this one and because it, it means something maybe in this other one, you know, that comes out two years later and it all just kind of helps to make it make sense. The other really cool thing was um they were talking about the brave and the bold which is um dc universe's version of batman who will exist separately from the version played by robert pattinson mm. in, in batman movies the brave and the bold will introduce the bat family and this is where we're going to get robin we're going to get batman mm. and robin and we're going to get a whole thing and i i'm excited about that because i always felt like the batman and robin thing that they did 10, 15, 20 years ago was terrible. <laughs> well, what it was, it was, it, it went funny. You know, they went funny. And I, I've never felt like funny is their strong suit. Like I've always like, like, I think you pointed this out to me, Hilton, and it always stuck with me when they do dark, they do dark really well. Mm -hmm. And why they don't stick to that, why they want to chase like the commercial, you know, like they, they get it. Like, I mean, the Robert Pattinson movie is the, is the perfect example of how emo Batman was the Batman we needed. We needed that mm -hmm. dark guy who was troubled and had all these issues. And so I'm excited about the Brave and the Bold. What were, what are your thoughts? Cause I know you were reading into all of it and, and yeah. seeing, like, there's a Supergirl movie. There's a, a prequel to uh, Wonder Woman, even like just uh, exploring like where, like before Diana was born, this this island mm. of women. I mean, there's like, there are a the lot Amazon. of really cool products. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of really cool projects that are coming that are just, I think, going to lay the foundation. Like this is almost right. like what Marvel did 20 years ago. It's like, this the is the, this is the foundation of a new world building. And, I love it. you know, the, the cool thing is that in the comic book world, you know, if you were reading comic books, when a lot of these were coming out, you know, these two labels were kind of playing off of one another, right? They would try to one up one another. And this goes back decades, you know, in the mm -hmm. 30s and 40s. You this know, they rivalry had Superman, is like, we got Captain that? Marvel, you got, you know, this character, we got that character. You know, it was always this little one up, one up, one up, yeah. going all the way up into the 90s, where you saw some, you know, characters just being mirrored, storylines, subject matter being tackled. And yeah. so I don't really think it's out of character for them to do this in a certain way with the cinematic and the television universe. So basically, you know, Amanda Waller being the DC version of Nick Fury, uh, <laughs> you know, who, you know, she's mysterious and she's got, you know, she's a, she's a, you know, she's a mean, real, you know, mean evil, willing to kill, <laughs> no nonsense, you know, you name By it. By no means necessary. Right. And, <laughs> and I think there's a, there's a way, if you look at some of these no titles, <laughs> you've got, know. you've got that darkness being woven yeah. in, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I'm most excited about because the, the, you know, this Batman thread that they're going to tell, yes, it's kind of got the Bat family, but mm -hmm. it's not the Bat family like you'd see in the, the Super Friends or, you know, right. that kind of stuff. Like, you know, this is Damian Wayne. Like, Damian Wayne yeah. is Bruce Wayne's son who was raised by Ra's al Ghul in the, you know, the, uh, the League of uh, Shadows. You know, this was like a real, <laughs> you know, dark kid this. who's like, shows up on the scene at like age 13 wondering like, why are you imprisoning all these people you should be killing? Like he's, that was his Robin, right? So yeah. you got like these characters that have these dark sides, 
but they're being introduced all at once as opposed to kind of piecemealing them together, which could take 10, 12 movies if you're trying right. to int introduce them sequentially, which is too much to take on. But you also see projects like uh, Swamp Thing coming back. Yes! I don't know. I don't know if Swamp Thing is going to be like the miniseries that <laughs> ran, you know, about two or three years ago on, on cable, but I hope so. Uh, because that is like the dark, like magic and evil and, Ooh. you know, just, oh my God, your <laughs> point like about the idea of there being all of these ensemble characters who have a different version of saving the world is, is completely embodied in a character like Swamp Thing. Yes. His version of saving the world is saving the world for plants. Whether or not humans are here or not is just coincidental. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, ah. he'll fight alongside you, but he's not really fighting to save so much the human race except for maybe the one or two humans he actually gives a darn about. Yeah. But, you know, their version of saving the world is different. You have Black Adam, as per the comics and the animated yes. series, who was an anti-hero who felt that saving the world meant getting rid of all these people, like who are causing all this trouble and not obeying his laws, even though he's been gone for 5,000 years. Right. There's, there are all these people on the front lines of this hero front fighting whatever enemy is going to be on the other side of the field, yes. but they're fighting with these different ideas. And I think there's so much fodder there for great storytelling, uh, great character development, correcting some old wrongs. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be a lot of people complaining at every yeah. step of the way until we get to that first movie and that first series and that first show. And I think James Gunn, I think he's got a good handle on, uh, on world building. He's done some yeah. amazing work with uh, Disney. And so, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and you start. Am, you're already starting yeah. to see them cancel out some of the series. Like they just canceled, uh, you know, the next season of Titans. Yeah. Like Titans is gone. Mm -hmm. Like you know, yeah. and so that's we're not going to see those characters anymore. And they're yeah. just clearing the field. You're, you know what? It needed to be done because I felt like it was just a level. And I'm not, I am, you know, obviously I'm a producer, I'm an actress, but, and this is not criticizing any work, but the reality is, is that it all just seemed like it was just being done and nobody was talking to each other. Like how mm -hmm. crazy is that, that, you know, they've got all these checkpoints and check, you know, but I think it was just a bunch of, um, projects that were under different, you know, production companies and everybody was just yeah. going for it and everyone was trying to save DC. Now it's one umbrella. And if you notice, like Marvel's been running this way for almost 20 years now, <laughs> it's been one umbrella and everything is, everything's connected and everything goes through everything. And it just seems like, I'm glad because you know, Peter, you know, uh, Peter Saffron and, and James Gunn, they come from this world. So they know how that system works. And they're just smart to take that blueprint and run with it. And just like you said, create and world build and just give us these amazing characters that we want. We want these characters. Yeah. And I feel, I feel like I know there's been like, you know, blowback because a lot of these actors that we love are leaving. But it's like, it's almost one of those things of if you have them there, then they bring that story that they told. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like you can't have Henry Cavill there and him not bring the stories that he told. We mm -hmm. almost need a fresh start, you know, and it doesn't mean he can't come back. Like they they kept they keep saying over and over, we have not fired him. It's just right now we need to tell these stories and then we'll get there. You know, they gotta so group. yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I'm way too long. That man's not getting no younger, and he can't stay jacked like that <laughs> into his 40s and 50s. Now he, you got, we got. I think we it's good get because this. he's an excellent actor. Like he almost needs to go and like get his Oscar nomination and do his amazing work and all this other, and then you know he can come back and play with us if he wants to. You know, yeah, um, he just need to make up his mind because he's not gonna be The Witcher and he's not gonna be yeah. Superman and he's not gonna be. You know, I'm like okay, y'all need to he's he's not Warhammer. Like, Give that man a role. Like, yes, like right, right. Oh. He's an excellent actor. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, what, like The Witcher, I didn't understand. Like, The Witcher, they're crazy. They should have let him do another season of that. But, okay, so I just need to send a shout out. This is just on GP. Um, you know, the Oscar nominations came out this past couple, like, past mm. couple weeks ago. Angela Bassett got her due. She got her nomination. Yes, girl. Yes. We got a bunch of people who were um, looked at, but someone was overlooked, and that yeah. was Viola Davis. Of course. Viola Davis. Mm. And now there's this whole conspiracy around the Best Actress nominee, and there's a whole investigation because another actress got in 
And it was like this last minute campaigning. And they said, there are rules like you can't lobby to get an Oscar nomination. Like mm. they can put up billboards, they can, you know, promote, they can do whatever. But in the like, like the hundred hour, there were all these celebrities who were saying, you know, you got to give this woman a, a nomination. You got a nominator, got a nominator. And one of the producers had basically said, oh, you know, Viola's a shoe in. Uh, this person's a shoe in. This person's a shoe in. And it ended up costing, they feel like it ended up costing Viola Davis her Oscar nomination. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it it's, it's some it's some stuff going on and I won't blame that actress because obviously it was the production I be, I feel like the production company was the one spearheading this and, and a lot of times actors get caught in the fray um yeah. but Vala Davis I mean woman King like come on like yeah. come Incredible. on like yeah what she had I, to do physically for that role and emotionally for that role yeah. honey, this is not a 30 year old woman i ain't gonna tell her no. anything guy on on tyler perry's internet i'm not gonna say her, i'm not gonna say her, her age but she's not 30 no more so the role that she played where she was kicking everybody in the ass and like running that, that's, and with running, these 30 year, and, 20 and 30 year old women running yes, with them. Like, yes, was it, it wasn't yes. a stunt double. It was by Ola yes, Davis. And yes. wielding those weapons that are not, you know, even though they're not the actual full on thing, it's like they still have some, there's some, there's some gravity in there. And it's like, she just was, she just defied all the odds. And she really always has. Um, yeah. It's really but see sad. that movie was was underdog to begin with. You know, it came yeah, out from a studio that yep. didn't have a huge budget to to make the movie. Yeah, didn't have a huge budget to promote the movie. Yeah, and you know it it you know it did good numbers, much better numbers it than defied, anybody expected. It defied the odds that everyone in the, it was a it was a favorite. Like but it, it really things? it really could have been if it had been distributed in more theaters oh, on yeah. opening weekend. Yo, if it had more promo, yo. it could have really been a blockbuster. But the studio. And you know, all I didn't put the money behind it and the faith behind it, mm -hmm. the backing behind it yeah, to do. make that happen. And so it's still so coming out, you know, it there's less people who have seen it, less people who are sitting there lobbying it, especially since yes. it's seen as like a an us movie, you right. know. And and I, I think that a lot of that played into uh the fact that I just think there's just so many people who haven't seen the movie yet. And like, it's, you know what I mean? You're crazy. And, Go see Woman King because it is honestly. There are award-winning performances. It's no oh, joke. Man. The story needs mm. to be told. The story needs to be heard. Um, Viola Davis was a producer, her and her husband. This was their production company. Yeah. They mm -hmm. pulled it together. Like she the was on, I think. Of love. Yeah, yeah, it was like she was on one of those actors, you know, like how they have the actors talking around the round table or whatever. And she said from the beginning, like she had to go in and fight. Like she had to explain. And she goes, and and no one, no other culture has to do well, nope. other cultures do have to do this, but she goes, you know, if this would have been a, a, a white man or a white woman, nobody they'd have been like, tell the story, tell the history. But because it was an African story and it was a woman and it was like female led, mm -hmm. and it was, I mean, it she strike said, one, strike yeah. two, strike and, three. Yeah. And she was like, and the fact that I'm still having to go in there and tell them that we're bankable and that we are worth the budgets and the money. And the productions is and the crazy. fact and the fact and, that it's not on streaming right now. It, why is it not on exactly? Because it came it out on Prime before why Black Panther, not, before Prime right. forever. Yeah, it's, there's there should be the streaming platform should have been lined up to pick this movie yep. up as soon as it came out of the theaters, and Amen. they're not there. And that distribution because this movie when did this movie? leave the theaters what was about six months ago five months ago something like that yeah. so it's like there was a whole second run and i mean eventually it will make it to a streaming service right. but for the purposes of the oscars there's six months uh, or however many months of non-viewing and not being in the limelight yeah that that this movie would have had a second life and a second leg if the minute it came out of the theaters I mean, even if it went to something like tubi or peacock <laughs> it, just somewhere it's, for people yeah. to see it it would have, we would have had a second life, and it's still out there, not yet on on a streaming service, which I think is more to that point you were making, yeah, about yeah. her not being able to get the backing. I, well, I think I it. think that's bizarre. Number one, because mm -hmm. as I, as you were giving that timeline, like again, it came out six to eight weeks before Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever has been in theater since for two and a half months, mm -hmm. and 
it is coming in two days to stream. And so for that to still not be available is unbelievable. I mean, I think it's available for purchase, but it hasn't been streamed. So I, it's it's weird, whatever they've yeah. done. But I'll say this also, um, Karen, to your point about you know, how she had to go in and if she had been anybody else, you know, I love Steven Spielberg. Like, yes, he's, he's, he's always got it right. I've, I've enjoyed all of his works. He is phenomenal. He is a force. He is the blueprint. Um, but he, if he decided he was going to do this film, there'd be no question. There would right. be no meeting about right. no second, no phone, no, 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 doubt whatsoever mm -hmm. and he would be given fair what here whatever you want like yeah we, we doing it and yeah. i think that is the most egregious you know um uh, yeah evidence of uh of uh of exactly you know just how the the wrong oh lord that i don't even know how we get to <laughs> write them because well, it's, it's, it's always something cycle. it's, it's it's conditional. And now it's like everybody, we're just, how are we still saying that we're not bankable? Like, I don't. Right. Why is I Hollywood so like, why are they so like anti-color? <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a cycle. You know, you have one end, on one end, you have movies that are telling our stories and you go all the way back to the help and, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, fences or you know enter these great black stories that are mm -hmm. told by black cast black writers black producers that go into movie theaters and make the money it costs to make them so they make they make table you know they yes. break even mm -hmm. and then some right yes. but because they're not making 800 million dollars or 900 million dollars the studio doesn't look at them as bankable not because they lose money but it's then cyclical because the next movie that comes along they say well if it's only going to make 100 million and it's going to cost 10 million, you know, we, we don't, re that's, that's a rounding error at Paramount. Like we, we're not really looking at a hundred million. We're looking for that, that half a billion we were trying right. to make. And so we're not going to put the money in to, to get the distribution to get the promotion and get they all, you know, all the gun. resources. Like, everything ain't right. <laughs> and, and so we just keep going in this loop. And I also got to put a little bit of it on us too. Cause you know, we, yeah. we get yeah, divided we quick. We, you know, we, we line up pretty good behind movies like Black Panther. But mm -hmm. Woman King, you know, there was like a third of us out here that was on some bullshit. Let's I be was, honest. You and, know, and, and early what is on, going on, like, like, yes. oh, you know, this movie is this and this. Like, the movie even out yet? What are you doing? Post what you mean? Yeah. about the what? movie that huh? hasn't come out yet. Like, go see it. Right. Then don't like it, and then post about Ugh. it. That's how things are supposed to work. And so we work against ourselves. And outside of our community, they see that. Yeah. Like, oh, y'all, y'all are not a, a monolith. You know, we yeah. like to pr we say we're, we're really proud about the fact that we are diverse and we are not a monolith, mm -hmm. but to the point that we don't collectively come together around properties that you know uh, speak mm. to us and for us is a problem. And I'm not no, going I'm no. not going to say nothing too controversial here. Say but it. Crazy, <laughs> crazy rich Asians. Every Asian I know saw that movie twice. A million they times. Was, they was and and they I went to see it a million up. times. I love that movie. I yeah, it was a fantastic that movie, movie deserving of all of its flowers. Yes. But then there were other movies uh, called like, I think it was one called like Family Visit or something, uh, uh, Stephen Coe or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was an Easter movie, you know, like about Filipinos and stuff. And that movie wasn't really that good. Even from the people I know in the Pinay community said it wasn't that good. But mm -hmm. they still lined up to support it. Yeah. And you didn't see a whole bunch of trash talking about the movie online. They kept their mouth closed because they knew that they had to represent and they had to back and be a united front. And we don't have that, that reflex yeah. well, when it comes to our stuff. And we go out there and tear our stuff Christy. down. <laughs> And and then it, it comes it becomes this self fulfilling ready, prophecy. But go ahead, Chrissy. I know Chrissy about to blow. And I took she had to put, well, her, I she had to put her glasses on. Her granny glasses. I, I took oh, well, no, I took my strings to off. I took my thing off. To oh, you took the strings off. I did. I took my holder off. Listen, I do want to say this though, Hilton. Okay, I, everything you're saying is absolutely fact. Uh, it is uh, no lies detected, right? No lies um, detected. But I will say this, though, about that. Uh, and, and we come and nip up on, you know, our month is coming, baby. It's blackity, black, black, black. Oh, Everything is black. Hours, six hours. So I'm going to say this, though. We have also, as a people, as yes. a as an entire existence of people, have been 
first of all, when you're stripped of everything, like I'm gonna go back um, because it is generational. It has been repeated. Mm, There's sure. always been somebody. No I, lies detected. Listen, I'm gonna just put, put this real quick bookmark out there. Everybody needs to go and either not, you need to do both. You need to pick up the book 1619 Project and you also need to watch uh, the, the show that is now on uh, Hulu, Hulu 1619. Because mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you something that exactly to your point, um, the the other side of that, uh, it, it is a double edged sword, sadly. Um, and we the only people, we the only ones. It's the only ones that if you break down everybody and how it is, we're the only ones that were, you know, chattel, chattel slavery was just so freaking damaging. Yeah. Um, and it still shows its ugly, nasty, filthy funky mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. every single day in our yeah. current existence um yeah. so much so that we're always going to have that one that's going to and right now we have we we had yeah we, we had, got a lot yeah. of them this we got people that started it's we got people that start podcasts about how bad why black panther is so terrible and it's i just came across that and when i tell you i hit that x button like that that ain't for me i don't want to yeah. watch that you talking to the wrong you're talking to the wrong one so i mean we always will have that because those people were groomed they were created that's why we had slave birds and they were black that's yeah. why we had you know you Look at what happened this past weekend. My Lord, my Lord, like the, yeah. the five black officers killing this young man. And it's just, it, it's been ingrained in our, again, our very existence Whoa, the here in racism, this yeah. country alone. I don't need to even get into the global element of it, but really in this country alone. So it's, while I do agree wholeheartedly, like it is only us, we don't know how to show up because we're always going to have that population of us that, you know, I always got some something to say. Excuse me. I'll be trying to watch my mouth. Um, that always got can't curse with the say. glasses on. I know, like, <laughs> you see, my little baby you see she pulled them off real quick. <laughs> <laughs> like, she like, I need to let loose. I know. I don't want to look. I don't want to cuss and be looking all intelligent and old. But oh. I just, oh. I just think it's a sad space um, yeah. that we have to always come to grips with. And it's and, and there's no and again there's no other set of people. People, many people who ended here outside of the original indigenous people who were also mm -hmm. people of color and lots yeah. of us there too. So um, who were forced to be here and be stripped of everything and have to spend generation after generation trying to get back and remember this like it is yeah. and, it, it, and it was and it will be, but it's just so hard. It's hard. I I said uh, I had a conversation not too long ago with somebody and, and they were trying to there was this this on the fence person in the room. And then there was myself <laughs> and another person who knew where we stood, who was able to we could talk about our uh, politics. We could talk about our faith. We could talk about whatever. But we knew where we stood and it was there yeah. was a common ground understanding. But if you have somebody that's on the fence about things, you it's certain things you can't say. You don't say in front of those people because you don't know how that's going to process for them. So um, it's the same way when it comes to film. I have learned um, to stay out of social media world, uh, talking bad about, you know, certain film. Like, Karen, you know, we I I did not care for <laughs> Black Adam. But, but what we, I yeah, but same. what I didn't do was it's, get on these on no. Blue Ivy's Internet mm -hmm. and say oh, don't go see it. No, go see it for yourself. No, yeah. There's so many people who love that, who love, yeah. who, and I heard for the, but I was like, but I'm not gonna, I'm not watching it on streaming. It just because, and maybe I do need to watch it again just because. I actually watched because it was, again and it wasn't as bad, but it's just not great. Like There were some like, elements that I enjoyed. There was so much hype. Like they had yeah. us going in going like, That yeah. was the thing. That was the and thing about that movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was the thing about the movie is that the hype was at an 11 <laughs> and the movie was like a seven and a half. The rock which had was us great. Going, the a great had us going up in there and I fell listen. asleep. Yeah, this brother was at in Hall H, levitating and in middle of Times Square, you yes. know, MCing and traveling yes. the world. 
hyping this up, doing commercials, breaking into other people's commercials. Can you, you know? imagine, like, if Woman King would have gotten one tenth of that? Yeah. Like, one, oh, like, yeah. come on. Yeah. And it was a movie worth the publicity. And, like, I agree with both of you. I agree with both of you. And I think one of the ways is, like, us having these conversations. Like, mm -hmm. having these conversations help you peel back that onion. Like, it needs to be pulled back, peeled back. It needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. It needs to be one of those situations where we, you know, uh, we realize what we're doing to our own projects and yeah. our own stuff. And we we cry because we don't have... Um, you know, we don't have, yeah, we don't have, you know, um, the representation or we don't have the films or we don't have this or we don't have that. And we're upset. But it's like, why are you upset when you don't even support it? <laughs> yeah, where, you where have you, so, what have you supported you, that, yeah. that would move the needle? That would move on, the needle. On that, on that condition. You know, you should, yeah. have a, you should have a portfolio, almost like stock. Where what you have say, you done? To like, okay, to if this is something I'm passionate about, if I don't think that we get enough scholarship money and to go to college, or if I don't right. think HBCUs are getting enough federal money or state money, right? Or like, okay, well, what are you doing to 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 take that on? You ain't got to like everything I like. You ain't got to up talk everything. You ain't got to yeah. smile and, no, and stuff yeah. if it's not something you love. But but you should be all of your energy should be moving toward the positive. Yes, and sometimes we don't the greater we community. don't do that. And we end up with, you know, this, like I said, this cycle of, mm -hmm. you know, not seeing the movies we want to get made, get made, mm -hmm. not seeing the actors we want to support getting cast, you not know, seeing the equity in pay, not seeing, I mean, you name it, the list goes yeah, down. The line, list but, goes know, on it and goes on. on and on. That is, yeah. that is true. That is yeah. true. Yeah. Well, you it's know hard. What, like, what do you uh, do? <laughs> one of our homework assignments, which I think is very timely in this conversation, was the Netflix show the new uh the new show You People? And ah! that was we had to watch it. And let me tell you, I thought this show <laughs> was brilliant. It's a movie. It it's a movie, people. Well, it's, a movie. it's not it's a, a show. Yes, it's a movie. movie. And I it, thought it was brilliant it on how it handled the reaction <laughs> of racism, the reaction <laughs> of just. Like just the the misunderstandings and when the you're culture faced, shock. the cult yeah the culture shock of two mm -hmm. cultures being married <laughs> together and two big definitive cultures oh yeah very different very different cultures okay so the movie stars let's go over this the movie stars the excellent the uh, underrated I feel one of the actors who deserves everything Eddie. Mr Eddie Murphy yeah. he deserves everything because he is very um. He's just a very accomplished actor. He, I love to see him when he does things that are more dramatic mm -hmm. because he has a way of being dramatic, but also being funny. And it stars Eddie Murphy, Julia, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, um, mm -hmm. David Duchovny, but who mm -hmm. brought it home for me was Lauren London and Jonah Hill. Yeah. Okay. It, they, these two, Jonah Hill, Lauren London are two two different individuals who are running around life who can't seem to get relationships right and they both you know want to be in in a more you know they want to have a relationship they're like every you know 20 something 30 something that's looking for love right that's amazing. Yeah. and they just happen to meet each other in the craziest way <laughs> <laughs> he gets it's in terrible. her car thinking she's a, an uber driver and, and and honestly the uber driver was just, just like her, it was her. <laughs> <laughs> and well, yeah, and the two people who shouldn't meet a Jewish boy from Brentwood and a you know a, a Muslim girl uh, you know who she's like she's from Baldwin Hills, which is like the Beverly Hills of 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 the black like it's the black the black community mm -hmm. like this is where all the LA people come from, and these two meet and they honestly have a connection and they have yeah. a connection because they they actually listen to each other they actually laugh with each other they find some sort of common ground and they fall in love like they are not they are unapologetically connected they fall mm -hmm. in love they pursue this and they don't care 
Well, they kind of care because they don't really tell their parents about each other until they're in it. You know, they they get into a full on relationship and it isn't until they're actually living together. And he he tells his mom, I love her. I'm going to I'm going to ask her to marry me like Mm -hmm. this girl is everything. And I mean, you believe it. I believe this relationship. I have Mm -hmm. to compliment these actors because they did such a good job of showing a true connection. And and I think that's some of the things that we forget, like you fall in love with who you fall in love with when the yeah. stars align i think it doesn't matter like um you know i have no problem with interracial relationships i've only ever had problems with people who are like i don't date black women or i don't date you know but like you know mm-hmm. those people like people mm-hmm. who are just like their issues are are too much or but they or they do like, it i only do this at the expense of hurting somebody else so yes. that's the other thing when like, you know it's their it's issue. their issue is the reason that they date who they date mm-hmm. so right so but th- this couple they come in just wanting love and they fight it with each other and it's sweet it's cute and then you it's meet the funny parents as hell. yes it's funny as hell you meet the parents and they're Ooh. i mean obviously Eddie Murphy plays. Is he plays David the blackest. Is he the dad? He's David yes, yeah. David oh Duchovny God. was the yeah. But these parents, they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with it. And even in 2023, this happens to like I remember asking my mom like when my mom is Mexican and when she dated my father, I asked her like how was that? You know? And she like, literally people disowned her from the family. Like they were Mm. like, she was like, they didn't talk to her. She wasn't invited. And I remember growing up in certain, you know, like certain people's houses we'd go to and you knew the racist house, you knew the, the one who might say something crazy, you knew, you know, we just, and my mom was like, mama bear like she would freaking scratch your eyes out if you even <laughs> looked at me sideways Like chocolate, she, was, she was like serious but this dealt with this dealt with that issue in a whole nother way but mm-hmm. what were your thoughts because it was so funny like the way that the reaction <laughs> that julia louis dreyfus was some of her like some I mean, of her best work? This David Duchovny, he didn't know what to do with the girl, so he started singing "Ordinary People." <laughs> oh, that was that a scene was right like, there. That was a scene. Chair. That was well, so. I, I, funny. Let, me, <laughs> let me let me say let me just say for this show, I went in with very low expectations mm-hmm. because the story has been told before. Before, uh, many the, times. The, the, the last, <laughs> the last one that we might know is yes. Guess Who. Guess Who uh, with Guess Bernie Mac. Yep. yep, that was the, the last time we kind of saw this setup, And it was great fodder for comedy. And you put a bunch of comedy actors in a room and you let them all play with it. And yeah. you get a halfway decent movie, pretty much no matter what the <clears> script <throat> is, because you got Bernie Mac, you yeah. know, and you got Zoe Saldana and everything. And then it worked. Mm-hmm. So... I will say this to anyone who is thinking like me, this is the same movie, but it's a yes. lot better done. It's it, got a better script story. is better. Yeah. You actually feel invested in the relationship between the two because they actually spend time going into the how they met, why they fall in love, what they have in yeah. common, and their their decision to move forward despite you know, their obvious differences and things like that. So by the time the families get together and start chipping away at each other, you're already invested and hoping and, and like, oh my God, I really hope that right. nobody says anything crazy because I want this couple and you to know win. It's coming. You know and, it's coming. And, and, and they set it up. They set it up. I mean, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is in, starts, she's in the movie before Eddie Murphy. And she's yes. already dizzy. She's already, you know, I mean, she's doing at the, the at church. Thing. Oh, just yes. you know, and they're and they're ad libbing. They go off script oh, a lot. Oh, and always. Jonah Hill is known for this. He is yeah. him, and you know, Will Ferrell, and and that whole echelon of comedy actors yeah. have been known for being able to go on scene and say, okay, in general, what is supposed to happen, and then yes. just let it go right off the rip. Yes. And Julia Louis Dreyfus meets him head on and you watch them <laughs> just do the second Far. city <laughs> whose Far. line is it anyway yes. you know improv oh scene where they're just scene after scene of them just you you know it's off the top of the dome and yeah. it's funny because it's it's it it gives it its authenticity it of of what an organic conversation would look like when you're trying not to 
allow your mom to say something crazy or you're trying to <laughs> you to know stop. it's right there like, and, and we've right all been there, there. Goes, we've all down. been there where you're like please lord don't tell that story again or oh yeah. this is not what we were talking about and oh you're gonna Honey. right so that part of it just allowed for so much comedy gold to happen in the scene David mm -hmm. Duchovny comes in, who's not a comedy <laughs> actor. He's right? not, but was so and hilarious. Just so deadpan. I don't know how they brought him in and said, okay, this is the oh. character you're going to play. You are not a supporting actor. You're the supporting actor supporting the supporting actors. Yeah. But you're going he to have some to scenes there. where you just got to keep a straight face. You have to have firm conviction and be as ignorant as you can be. Mm -hmm. And he ran that so perfectly. <laughs> he's going to get recognized for this, and he's probably going to get other roles. He now, I'm gonna, deserves it. Oh, now man. I'm going to I'm going to tell you what what something about Eddie Murphy that I really really like. Yes, tell Eddie me. Murphy could have got into this film with all of the Eddie Murphy that we know yes! Eddie Murphy can Eddie Murphy, and he and he could have just <laughs> ate up. He could have ate up every scene. He could have Kevin Harted it and like he Kevin oh, like, it. He could have just stomped us to the ground with his comedy. And, he and we would have loved straight it. man the yeah. whole film. And he was like, you mm -hmm. know what? I'm Eddie Murphy. I come in with a certain organic level of comedy just because I'm on the screen. Yes. All I have to do is use this expertise to set everybody. I can tee everybody up. And they're going to win. Everybody hit the punch. <laughs> they're going to win. And that's what happens. He walks in the yes. room. He don't tell not nary a joke. He's not getting no. no punch lines. He's not getting none of that. He is the baseline that everybody else gets laughs yes. off of. But those laughs, <laughs> he is responsible for. He and, literally and he was deserves like the Scotty Pippen. The, He's like giving them the play. He's just laying it up. <laughs> he Allie, assist him assist all of them. It and for like... somebody of his level who could very easily see this as yeah. like one of his comeback movies where yeah. he's got to be over the top and he's got to eat up every scene. Mm -hmm. For him to play the stoic character Hilarious. you know who's just, just i mean he doesn't even really yeah. he doesn't even raise his voice he was so movie Hilarious. just just, just Hilarious. Quiet. and and the last Quiet thing i'm gonna assassin, say which right? i think separates <laughs> this movie from what every other movie that we've seen do this is that they go all the way there all the with, way i mean all with, the way there with they no, did, like, yeah they, they could have let it be just off. black and white a black no. and white dynamic would have been enough with this no. cast. They could have left it that there, but they said, in, no, honey. we got to have right. a Jewish, like a really devout Jewish family. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. have to have a really, really devout Muslim family. And I not mean, just any Muslim. We're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, nation of Islam-ish. Yeah. Lewis, like, Muslim. Fred I, Hammond was right. murdered on that T-shirt. First time we see right. him. We like, knew where Eddie stood just with Fred the sweatshirt. As soon yeah. as he show up on the scene, he's cussing out the coffee shop because yes. light-skinned people here. Oh, ain't it enough was kinky hysterical. Hair. It's, it's hysterical. just It's just you to, to, to have that, I gotta take you out of that level of dynamic <laughs> happen and tackle oh, that without being super cartoonish. Yeah. And not going completely off the rails. Like, you know, Jonah Hill has had some movies that have gone off the rails. Yeah. It's still been funny, you know, but yeah. like Super Bad went off the rails. But that was what it was supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, we loved it. Yeah. But they kept it. they kept it on the rails. And he ended up being one of the centerpieces. Eddie Murphy and Lauren London Ooh. managed to be the centerpiece actors for which everybody was able to kind of spin around. And mm -hmm. Lauren London, you know, didn't do a whole lot of zany stuff. She didn't have any like super mm -hmm. emotional scenes, but she really, really played that anchor role. Yeah. And it might be, in my humble opinion, one of her best roles. Yeah. One uh, of her best. Yeah. And because I'm, it and listen, literally is her best. I'm, I'm yeah. a fan, but I'm not a fan. Like, she somebody became, told, but she became somebody, an actress. Somebody like, said it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody said it and it sticks with my head forever now. They said Lauren London has the same acting ability as Michael B. Jordan. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you had to take that the is pause. absolutely you right. You said pause. everything. You said it all. But she Aww. did great in this movie, so I was su pleasantly surprised. Yeah, and I hope people get to see it because there's well, a lot of dialogue happening. Yeah, that, that needs to happen in the real but, life. But what I think we need, to, who we need to congratulate, is obviously Jonah Hill, Kenya Barris, yeah. and Kevin Meisher, who were the producers. They're the ones who came together and said we need to tell this story. Yeah. But like you said, they go there. Like I had some of my some of my white friends were like, "Wow, that was a lot to unpack. That is a lot to think about when you when you when you date outside of your race." Like, and I go, "It really isn't if 
you are actually like you actually love the fact that they love each other and their yeah. love is greater than any of the differences it really isn't that much to unpack but if it's un something to unpack then you have to like start unpacking like yeah. don't be afraid like the, the and what i loved is that the parents realized how terrible that they were the ones it wasn't the love affair it wasn't the kids it, their love was pure and and i think that's where you you're right that's where laura lauren london really sold it is that you we believe she was in love with jonah and we believe jonah was in love mm -hmm. with her mm -hmm. and it was yep. this relationship wasn't there was nothing fake to it there was nothing you know obviously this wasn't even the type of guy or girl that they would have ever dated their parents were pushing all these other people to them and it was like they went for the one who was nice to them them, the one that listened to them, the one that cared about them and just treated them the way that you want to be treated in a, in a love affair and in a love story, you know? Um, but Christy, I know you had so many thoughts at this movie. I just felt like it just is what this, what this conversation needs to be. Mm -hmm. It's you where we, screen, we need Christy. to have the, yeah, <laughs> Christy was probably, I think, were you yelling, laughing, crying? I literally got sad when the, when the, when the story changed Yeah, and we were worried that they were, yeah. that they, they weren't going to pull it off. I got and I sad. thought, oh, they're really going to go in that direction and kind of, because we've seen movies do that yeah. where people literally are like, well, then we had to be happy, but we learned whatever. But how lesson. many times in real life have we heard of couples who were like interracial couples and the family made it unbearable, unbearable. for them to even yeah. exist? It's a real and thing. So they, and so they actually just go, you know what? It's better for us not to be together. Yeah, it's a like, real it's thing. It's just easier. What were we thinking? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> right. and, and, and so let me, let me, first of all, everything, I, I couldn't hardly contain myself. Because <laughs> it was so, everything you all just touched on, there were so many parts. I mean, again, the, the way they were able to, these were A-listers, everybody from even the, what's the guy? Oh my God. From the grandmother, Jonah Hills, who plays uh, grandmother. Oh, I'll give the, it to you. Keep going. Oh I'll my God. Uh, Rhea, Perlman, Rhea Perlman, Rhea yeah. Perlman was here. Yeah, well, we had um, Sam J here. We yeah. had Nia Long was the Nia, mother. Well, of course, to, I can't you know, ever overlook Nia Long. Yeah, I mean, but the the, the it the was level it was of, just yeah the level yeah the level of talent that, <laughs> that I'm sorry in. I just want to talk about like even after after they left church it was so funny or Temple it was like the the doctor just the <laughs> conversations of the men that were coming up to Jonah it, it just these were classic individuals and it was so you know I you always worry about when you have such definitive differences between yes. um these two, you know with cultures right is it mm -hmm. going to be is it going to be so over overtly stereotypical and what it was was literally reality. I mean, it mm -hmm. was, you had some parts that were just for straight up comedy, right? Um, right? When you have, what's his name? Oh my God, what's his name from Blackish? Dion um, Cole. Dion, Dion Cole. damn Cole is a fool. <laughs> Mike Epps was in there. The Tron <laughs> glowing Epps. suits. I got 40 of them. Listen, that shit, that was hilarious. <laughs> a troll wedding. I was like, always, okay. <laughs> there's always a cousin or somebody that can do hell. I've been that cousin, yeah. you know, that can just like, I'm, we're going to pull it off and we're going to make it work, you know, yeah. but, um, but you know, uh, outside of that, the authenticity of, again, you had this, this odd couple, you know, what yeah. society and what culture and what heritage and tradition would deem. Right. Uh, matter of fact, probably society doesn't give a crap these days. It's more so about these individuals who feel so deeply rooted, but they're kind of ish. You know what I mean? Just like with they're cussing in church. That, that was hysterical to me. That whole exchange with, with Jonah Hill and his family, <laughs> like up for 40 and minutes. <laughs> this ha it was it was classic comedy, and I think being able to. Uh, relate to all of those things. Like I can't relate to being Muslim, but I am a very much aware. And right. um, you know, Eddie, I just love Omar Epps for calling him Woody. Like your name is Woody. You know, that's your mama <laughs> name. You. I'm gonna call you with your mama. Well, name you always you, you got know. the uncle that's gonna keep it real. Like your oh, brother. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I ain't gonna let you Akbar me. I can you drop yeah, names. I, I know you didn't you know, change your I name. I knew you before you were part of the nation. Like I right. knew you. Tony. I but I wanna. That. 
I, I just, I, I, first of all, congratulations to Lauren London. I mean, this is her first film since Nipsey's death and yeah. or murder. And they also, we see Nipsey, uh, we see a billboard, I, I mean, uh, some graffiti art, you know, in tribute to him in the film. Um, it was just an incredible, I love the culture of it. Oh my God. Let's talk about, oh, 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 uh, <laughs> Miss, Miss uh, 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 our can't, friend. She can't even take it in. She's like, who's oh. the who? Who's Mo? She, they Sam play Jay. Mo. Sam J. Man, Sam Jay. listen. Oh yeah. Sam J. Yeah. Listen. The, like I'm telling when, you, the the one win. to watch. Like comedian. They, they yeah. yeah. When when they're on the plane, you know, and and Kenya Barris actually makes a, a cameo in the film uh -huh. and on the plane, and and <laughs> and, and when and when Eddie comes to sit down, and he, she's like. Yeah, I'm a I'm a girl. I got titties. Well, he's like you, you brothers. <laughs> like he instantly assumes that that he, that that Sam oh. that that Mo is a, a guy, and he's yeah. She's, she's like, I got titties. I, like, oh I'm man, like, I just was like, yo, this is <laughs> it's so real. Because then again, yeah. there, there's another struggle. Like we deal with genders, and we deal with yeah. how to acknowledge people. Just like now, I almost had like a the aneurysm trying to make sure I didn't you know be offensive, right? Um, and say she, he, it, they. I just want to be. You know, I, I want to be sensitive to those things. Right. And so, because I understand that, you know, and it's like, oh my God, boy, that was so realistic though. When he was like, I didn't, I ain't know, you know, but, but yeah, they listened you know, it I gotta, so brilliantly. I gotta say, with Sam J, the role that, that they played in, in, the, in the movie mm -hmm. was so pivotal because, pivotal. because mm -hmm. Sam J's character, Mo, was like the oracle. Like, so yeah. he would, yeah. he would, he would go out like all of every, his touchstone for black culture is them. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in this podcast, you know, there's no, oh, you're going to be all right. And, oh, this is going to work out. It was real. You know, Sam, <laughs> real, like, real. it ain't going to work. Yeah. It, it's, no, like you bad, you like, a real one? Yeah, like you like, just shocked. Like, I'm, like you know, what you doing? Just, yeah, just, you <laughs> stepping outside the line. Yeah, like, like letting him know. You really that, thought like, that this just because you appreciate against. the culture, you can have a piece of the culture? Did you really like, think that? Like if you're on a real podcast talk. That with real this person talk. and you're having this this daily or weekly uh, dialogue, like and, one and his appreciation yeah. and his lens through which yeah. he, en he engages the culture yes. as a as a, a white man from the uppity part of Beverly Hills as a Jew coming mm -hmm. into this black community, you can tell it comes through, you know, uh, uh, Jay's character, right, Mo. Yes. And yes. so you, they keep going back, and and mm -hmm. you know he's kind of like either in the podcast or in direct conversations. It's almost like this processing for him, but it ends up being processing for us, the viewer as well, mm -hmm. because, you know, we're not in Eddie Murphy's character's head. We're not right. in Lauren London's character's head. We're not in Lauren London's mother's character's head, Neil Long. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're out here in the audience, but we're in Moe's head. Yeah. We're, we're on Moe's side. Like, like we need come back, come back to your corner from this box of magic. Yeah. And let's let's have this talk. <laughs> like, you know, this is a bull job, blah, 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 blah. This is the reality. And having that touch tone like really help process. It. Again, you know, we've seen this movie before yeah. two, three, four times. And it was a, a lot, lot of, of ways they could have just rehashed old material, made some barbecue rib jokes, and oh, he mm -hmm. can't do the electric slide or something like that. And it right. would have been like nothing. But they really went into the gritty and it was rough. Yeah. And some of those scenes were hard to watch. Well, I yeah. like Julia Louis oh, you know what? character. This is the you know, yes, trying, I loved it. But yeah. she's still, she's like, still like being all the things you're not it's supposed so, to say, and like so it's just wrong, bad. Man. But you know what I love? I love the fact that it took you into each of the cultures, right? But like, remember when they were in the temple, and then they have this whole dialogue. Her and Jonah have this whole dialogue, and they start cussing, and it's like, okay, you're 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 protecting this temple and this image and we're Jewish and you should marry a Jewish girl, but you're in, in temple cussing. Like, it's almost like, what are we holding on to? What are we holding on to here? Are we mm -hmm. holding on to what we That's believe why. in? Are we holding on to what we've been taught to be true? Are we like really going to allow that to stand in the way of two individuals who genuinely love each other, who genuinely have found a way? And I love the scene. I love the scene where Eddie Murphy takes Jonah 
to the basketball court and says, <laughs> okay, well, you, talked about, you talked about picking up games. And is this like, is this like that park? And, and he's like, uh, uh, uh. And at first we're like, oh, Jonah's about to get just oh, killed. Is. And he actually when he pulled out his phone, it was like, yep, yeah, and he was like yeah. And he was You're like, yeah. And he was like, he basically <laughs> wanted to clown him, but then yeah. he gets in there and actually plays with the guys. He yeah. actually like actually did run games with these guys and he, be, they were all loving him. They were all friends. And it was almost like, Eddie had that moment of like, like, I got to still hate him. I got to still hate him because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to, he's not, he's not, he's not a Muslim, like, he's not, the, he's not the man that I want my daughter to bring home. And it almost comes back to where, and this is what the, the fun, this is another scene I really loved where him and his brother, Mike Epps are in the car together. And this is after they've broken up and Mike Epps, the, the uncle that has a, has a has a record, the, the uncle criminal. who steals, the uncle, you know, the uncle that you like just go, oh, he steal, Lord, but he don't kill. He ain't, he like, that's he the kill. Uncle. you know, the uncle that you're supposed to like be ashamed of. He's the one who comes to him and says, man, you were really giving it to him. Like you really destroyed their relationship. And why? Because you're Akbar, because you just could not <laughs> allow your daughter to love a white man. And Eddie's just like, like he just uh. really had to sit with that and go, wow. Like it was, it was never them. It was always us. It was yeah. always me and the mom. And it was always us. Who and you, stood know in the way. you know what else they did? I thought was classically brilliant. Um, because technically these films, if you think about, you know, the the history of these films. So when you mm -hmm. have your, uh, you know, the original, then the next one, and then this one. Uh, Jonah Hill is so average and so, you know, what, again, Hollywood would deem, again, probably wouldn't even make a star. If yeah. he didn't have that, you know, that if support he wasn't system. so intelligent and so like there, that talented too. with his writing and with his producing. And, and he got yeah. in with a he he has buddies. I do I have always appreciated though that group of buddies. You know, we got Paul Rudd, Seth Rogan, um, and the list goes on. Yeah. But they they're Don't all part of that that yeah. you know that crew. And so um, and they're funny as hell together. Like I can't, I'm not mm -hmm. mad at none of it because yeah. it works. Um, but they could have gotten anybody else or they, you know, Jonah could have just written it and then not been, but Lauren is freaking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and to have the two, and I just thought that's the additional, you know, um, uh, skin deep type of um, contrast that mm -hmm. they did so brilliantly yeah. um, that they're supposed to be a certain aesthetic, you know, for people to, you know, aside from your faith, cause you can exactly. walk away from your faith. You yes. can convert, yes. you can do, you can do whatever you want, you yeah. know, but to have certain things, um, there's a certain, some things you just can't change, you know, you still want yeah. to see that's the, to your point, I thought I it was that's, great. That's really yeah. the point, Chris, because, you I know, agree. They, like I said, they could have brought one of them Hensworth brothers in here to play that role. Yep. And then everybody would have been like pulling their hair and, ooh, ooh girl, I mean, too. Oh, that boy. I get that it. white get boy. Some, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the fact that it's Jonah Hill, you know, mm -hmm. who just did a, a documentary on Netflix that yes. came out like two months ago about him losing weight and doing his psychotherapy and, you know, yeah. getting his head right and all this, you know, it, to your point being like average, like the most average person that could have played opposite Lauren London in a, you know, mm -hmm. you could imagine yeah. even mm -hmm. as a white guy adds validity or adds texture and, and makes it easier to buy and like, she must really love him. Mm -hmm. yeah. If she's going after, if she giving up the kingdom for Jonah Hill, they their connection yeah. must be off the hook. It's not and about they, pets, they really and they got, pets and money yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. Right? And think so about really even works. Lauren London. Like she is, while she's gorgeous. Yeah. And at the same time, she's got a real um, a African American body. black woman body because she thick than a mug, honey. I was like, oh, I like it. Oh, it's cute. I'm that's, glad you said it because I can't yeah. even say like, stuff like that because that's inappropriate for me to say. <laughs> well, I want to thank no, you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying trying to help all the men out here who home. wanted to say it. It was because beautiful. I got you. Oh, it was, I got she just, it's beautiful. Even, even now that she's doing her press tour, she's obviously lost yeah. weight and she's like thinner, a lot thinner than what right. she was in the movie. But I but love she that. was beautiful was in this movie. And they kept like it was a real body. Like it's they were real. like, let's go get the, the skinniest 
actress and you know they wanted a real Zoe girl. Saldana she played yeah. in the last one so you yeah. can, again look at Ashton Kutcher and that was in his you know yeah it was it was not scruffy it was prime. very clean white yeah. boy and then Zoe Saldana who is you know again she's she's a, she's a lot of things um and a but a very but came, actress but also yes, like we, she is the the uh, the she is the stereotype of right. the, the black female you know, yeah you know the, thing, but just not think, curvy, yeah. huh? like just if yeah. you just think about as a black person like who would be you know the guy that if your sister brought home right, right. to meet your parents like that they would instantly have a problem with or, or not they're not get won over by looks Right. You know, Ashton Kutcher would come in and like, OK, he obviously has a job. He's clean cut, you know, boom, boom, boom. You got all this cachet that comes in yeah, you right. know, with that. But Jonah Hill is like, I'm about to leave my job to be a podcaster, <laughs> a podcaster. and I'm it about to lot. marry your daughter. Yeah. And I'm about to so like, gave you it all to you. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. are things that lot. would have been questionable. Like, wait, you leaving your, it, your high paying job in finance? to be a podcaster yeah, and you yeah. want to you're daughter, going you into an build? accomplished black like, family like yes. you know, play, eddie murphy's family was an accomplished black family yes. it was like you know it was the muslim version of the huxtables like it was yeah. like you know what i'm saying they were act the activist versions you know but it was i think that was how smart this movie was so you, yeah like you've got to watch it because it's so intelligent it's like so you good. get so many nuggets but it's like they peel back the onion on everybody they peel yeah, it back yeah. on the 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 jewish family that grew up that is in Brentwood they peel it back on the Baldwin Hills Muslim they peel it back on this love story they peel it back on all of our preconceived notions of like you said like in that first version of this movie where we got the Aston Kutcher who's very handsome and very and you get Zoe who's very perfect and it's like what I mean it's like right. they gave us a real couple and they gave us this scenario and they made you feel uncomfortable <laughs> they made you feel offended yeah. they made you laugh and like the, the like you said eddie murphy is like a surgeon oh, he is he like was, a silent assassin yeah, he, he literally so like he was literally setting up every single scene like it's like that eddie murphy brain just like he knows comedy through and through even if you're not going for like the the obvious laugh, he gives you the laugh and he gives mm -hmm. you all of it. And Julia Louis Dreyfus, David oh, Duchovny, Jonah Hill, Just, Lauren how Lundy, they keep everybody. It was so good. Like, they, like how do you sit across knowing the scenario, <laughs> talking to what is supposed to be an Orthodox <laughs> Jewish family about your relationship to Farrakhan, and not yes. expecting that to blow up? the entire dinner right you know just that that just and it as, a, as an actor blew up. like how many takes would i have to do because i'm breaking up laughing just oh. the scenario the situational comedy is on 10 throughout on the entire 10. show the entire movie and yeah. it, and it also it's what gets us through because what happens is yeah. is that this is actually if you strip away the comedy this is a painful story painful. you know these are two people painful. who are who are really struggling with you know, she's struggling trying to, to get on in a, in a white dominated industry as a black woman who didn't go to Harvard. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to get out of, Howard. he's trying to, he's doing the other thing, the going in the other direction, trying to get away from his privileged position yeah. in money and finance, where he's got all of these people that know him and trying to go into this cultural space. And they're, they're meeting each other on going this way. Yeah. And so there's, there's all of this, this angst and and pain when they fall in love and everything but the the comedy even though it exists because of the interaction of these painful situations it yeah. actually acts like a novocaine that allows mm -hmm. us to watch this it movie does. without squirming in our seats because if mm -hmm. you took away the comedy and made it a drama this would be a really there were some oh! real <laughs> hard Heavy. arguments hard. and conversations and situations where you were like like you're like he did he bring him with a red sweatshirt into a a, a crip <laughs> a crip barbershop to he yeah, could get him he, killed he like just did that. stuff in he my head that. that was like I was sitting there like man this is actually rough and there yeah. was some, like I said some real rough conversations that happened there but the comedy got yeah. us through it yeah and it allowed it to be digestible and I think it's the key to its success is that comedy and the fact that it was able to just be in every corner of every shot whether yeah. it was the subject. Or whether it was, you know, just kind of like in the background. <laughs> 
but it made this movie like really worth watching. Mm-hmm. I think it was a movie so that it was great. worthy of the theater. I it think was this worthy movie of the was worthy of the theater. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. done well yeah. in yeah. the theater. And, and you know what? It was worthy of the theater. And I, I say congratulations to uh, Kenya Barris. Congratulations to yeah. Jonah Hill. Congratulations to the whole cast. They did that. They did yeah. that. We didn't talk they about really Nia did. Long too much, but Nia Long was there and she was equally fantastic. I yes, want to say, can I just real quickly, yes. I want to say Nia Long was so good. And it's so funny because she was she was the absolute opposite of you would have thought, because, uh, uh, well, she was the, no, she was she, yeah. literally on board with everything he was saying, mm-hmm. because typically in these yep. films, in the original and then the second, you know, mm-hmm. remake of it, um, typically the mom is the, is the first to be the so accepting. One. Yeah. And so, yeah. but, but I will say this, um, Nia Long, yeah, she was like, tell him, baby, tell him what Farrah Khan mm-hmm. has said and what he did. <laughs> she was like, yeah, oh, uh, she was all over that. But yeah. I have to encourage people. Mm-hmm. One, you got to watch this. Yes. And then two, you got to go back and watch the original because Catherine Hepburn, God rest her soul, honey, she gives a read on her lady that worked for her who she in the event of this read ends up terminating her at the same time because she was she kept coming around to be nosy because Sidney Poitier's character was already in the house was you know he's he's already arrived they're waiting on this is guess who's coming to dinner this is guess who's coming to dinner I'm and we should get a link we should put a link when when this comes up maybe somewhere because it's maybe on a service somewhere where we Catherine Hepburn honey reads this lady down to the yeah. ground, under the ground, and sends her on her way. And it is one of the best, it's one of the my it's one of my absolute favorite scenes of all time. Like when right. there's a when there's a great monologue to be learned or had, and she gives that. But Nia Long's character in this uh new, yeah, you people is completely opposite from the Catherine Catherine Hepburn, you know, that traditional role. But anyway, she I think this is a movie brilliant. that based on everything we've discussed here, Christy and Karen, mm-hmm. I think it wins because of the script. Yes. It wins because of the cast. Yes. And I think it kind of wins because of timing. This is, a, this is perfect timing for this, this movie yes. to exist. Uh-huh. It's, there's nothing else really out there that's kind of in this lane. Mm-hmm. And it's something that everybody can enjoy. Everybody can buy into and yes. understand and relate to, whether you've been through this or not. And uh, and again, it's on Netflix. And if you don't yeah. have Netflix, why are you watching this? Like, how you, you know, doing? borrow like, your friends. Get somebody. Who, who, who else has got the password? Right. You're well, well, somebody I mean, the password. What do you do with your life? Exactly. But it also wins on its comedic intelligence yes, because, like you said, real. it's so it, it helps it helps these hard conversations move, and you don't even realize you've been transformed or you've yep. been moved to the next. You've and move through something very uncomfortable. So, guys, we are way over on this show, but it was worth it. It was worth it. We it's just ordinary people. <laughs> that was. You don't know which way to go. Like, first of all, he was on key. He was on he, key. Wait, wait, home. wait. <laughs> my, Mike Epp said you drug him like, oh, like a big girl with a uh, broke left foot or something. He said, I said, oh. Yes, oh, no. okay. but that's the thing. The people that you don't ex- expect to be like the heroes of the film. Mike Epps uh, was like the hero of the film. He yeah. got Eddie to realize like you drew you- this way. Yeah, and it was like you was you were out to get him and you did it. And he was like, What? Like he didn't realize how at fault he was. But guys, mm-hmm. learn something, yes. grow from this. This is a perfect opportunity for you to see a great movie, for you to laugh. And for you to just talk about, like, you need to have a conversation when you with your friends. Like, watch this movie and then go have an uncomfortable conversation with your friends. (laughs) That's yeah. That's the only way we ever get through it. It's like you don't ever get to the rainbow unless you go through the storm. In this country, this world, we need to go through the storm. We've we've avoided the storm for far too long. Uh, But guys, we this it. That's the Bop the Blurred Official Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for laughing with us. We hope we entertained. And we hope you learned something. Bye. <laughs> Ooh, close it out. Tune in every Tuesday for a new episode of The Bop, the Blurred Official Podcast.